Welcome to Worship with Pleasantville Presbyterian Church. I'm Pastor Debbie Bronkema. We are glad you are here today as we gather together in spirit. If you're watching on a live platform like Facebook or YouTube Live, you're welcome to say hello and let each other know who's here in worship together. This is the day that the Lord has made. Come, let us worship our living God. Friends, we often do things we wish we didn't do, or we don't do things we know we should do. Thankfully, God's grace and forgiveness is enough to cover us through all the ways that we choose to separate ourselves from God. Knowing that we are forgiven, loved people of God, May the peace of Christ be with each of us. From Psalm 137, verses 1 through 4. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down and there we wept, when we remembered Zion. On the willows there we hung up our harps, for there our captors asked us for songs, and our tormentors asked for mirth saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How could we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? Remember, we remember Zion. 
the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the listening ears of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You know, if I'm being honest, when I was a child, this was not my favorite Bible passage. I didn't like the idea that the Lord was going to make me lie down in green pastures. That sounded like being forced to take a nap. And naps were never my favorite as a kid. I've been asking myself if I've really changed that much this week. Because this experience of social distancing and self-quarantining and shelter in place, all terms we didn't know a few weeks ago, this experience is difficult. We aren't napping. In fact, in some ways, we may be busier than ever trying to figure out how to manage this sudden new world. For some of us working at home, some suddenly homeschooling, some trying out how to live without a salary, all of those things, very different from a green pasture. At the same time, some of us are trying to figure out how to fill the hours of their day, how to stay awake during the day so that the nighttime hours aren't long and sleepless. There was another part of the 23rd Psalm that bothered me as a child. It wasn't the shadow of the valley of death part. I understood that there was death and that when we died, we would be in heaven with God. It was the part about eating surrounded by my enemies. First of all, I'd been hoping enemies were just cartoon characters. But if the Bible mentioned them, well then the enemies were real. And secondly, why would I eat, surrounded by people who didn't like me? But now, having lived in the world long enough to know that enemies don't necessarily look like cartoon characters at all and can actually sneak up on us the way this virus has snuck up on us, I see that the problem is real. God doesn't promise us a world without problems or troubles, or even enemies. God promises us that God is with us. As Rabbi Harold Kushner puts it, God's promise was never that life would be fair. God's promise was, when it's your turn to confront the unfairness of life, you'll be able to handle it because God is on your side. God will give you the strength you need to find your way. In fact, when we use up all our strength, there is a God who doesn't leave us alone and shows us where to find sunlight and daytime again. This moment now, it is a time to let God hit reset for us to let God's strength meet us where we are lacking. Maybe it is our physical needs that are struggling. For many of us, it's our emotions that are really all over the place. We're angry and we don't know why. We're sad for what would have been happening right now if the world hadn't turned upside down. We're afraid, 
that the money or the food we have won't last as long as it needs to last, or that our job won't be there when we get back. We're afraid for the people we know who are fragile, and we're sad alongside the people who are grieving. The 23rd Psalm, the most famous psalm, the one most likely to have been memorized. These words, they do meet us where we are right now. We need to know the Lord is our shepherd and will help us through these confusing and troubling times. We need to slow ourselves down into the green pasture, to visit the still waters of our memories and make space for God to restore our souls. The road, the path that we hear about here, it isn't just an easy path. The path of righteousness for God's name's sake, it's also a path that will often put us at odds with the world. It is a path that asks us to care more for the good of all than just the good of ourselves, which is the exact situation we are in right now. We know that we don't know what this path really looks like. But the truth is we hardly ever do. We tend to envision straight paths through open fields, but we look back at the path we've been on so far and it's hardly ever been clear or straight or anything near what we had imagined. So now is the time to let ourselves hit reset, to remember again what it means to be in relationship with the God who doesn't leave us alone, no matter what to remember what we really need to live, to reorient our lives in the direction of walking in peace and justice, compassion and hope, to breathe in and pay attention and take away from these moments what we want to remember about who and whose we are. Friends, even now, even when the physical house of the Lord is not a place we can be, we do dwell in the house of the Lord in our hearts, in our minds, in our souls. We do remember the stories and the songs of our faith, and we do pray the prayers of God's people. In a few moments, when I pray, there will be places for you to consider who you are praying for right now. Who's sick? Who's alone? Who's a doctor or a nurse putting themselves on the line? Who's stuck deciding the right thing to do from a position of leadership they may have never expected to be in? We are in the house of the Lord, and we dwell there no matter what. May we with confidence hold on to the Lord, our shepherd, who meets us where we are and makes us one body together across time and space. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, we do invite you to share from the gifts you are able to share to continue to support the work of the church, either by giving online or mailing in a donation. We appreciate so much the generosity of God to us and give thanks and dedicate all that we do and all that we are to serving God.
Let us pray. Lord, we lift up to you the prayers of your people. Especially this day, we pray for those who are ill, who need your healing touch. We pray for those who are feeling alone, who need to know that they are loved and cared for and connected. We pray for those who are in the healthcare field, asking that you protect their health and give them strength and peace for this journey. We pray for those who are afraid they are losing their job or who have already lost it. We pray for those in positions of leadership, trying to figure out how to do the next right thing. Lord, help us to know that we are connected with each other, and most of all, that we are connected with you. And let us pray together as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, we are in challenging times. If you need prayers, if you need help from your church community, please reach out by email or by phone. Continue to connect with us wherever you found us today. Now may the love of God and the peace of Christ Jesus and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. Shit.